This is the Zinger 21C, the 3D printed inline two seater hybrid hypercar that just broke the lap record of the Guna Seca, storming around two seconds faster than the McLaren Senna and firmly announcing its arrival on the hypercar stage. So yeah, it's quick, ridiculously quick, but it's not speed or the one plus one layout that really marks this car out from the plethora of other hypercar startups out there. No, it's the idea it represents. It's the inspiration behind it, which is why I'm standing next to this, the Blackbird SR71, hands down the coolest aircraft ever made. You see, the CEO and founder of Zinger Vehicles, Kevin Zinger, took inspiration from the SR71 Blackbird when he was devising the 21C. Not for the styling or powertrain, of course, but for the skunk works mentality that made it possible for Kelly Johnson and his small team of engineers to build a spy plane capable of cruising at Mach 3.2, that's around two and a half thousand miles an hour, at 85,000 feet, in an incredibly short amount of time. He wants this car, like this plane, to be a giant leap, a tech reset that challenges everything we know about how we build cars. Only 80 will be built, costing $2 million each, with first deliveries in 2023. But it's not really a car. The Zinger 21C is a demonstrator for what's possible with digital design and 3D printing. Yep, anything that can be 3D printed on this car is 3D printed, the suspension arms, the crash structures, the dash structure. If we look in here, this entire exhaust system, these beautifully intricate heat shields here, it's all printed from Inconel, from titanium, from aluminium alloys. And it's why when you look into the rear of the car here, there's some amazing mesmerizing organic shape. It's more like muscle and tendon than it is pieces of metal. In fact, we did a full video around two years ago on this entire process and it's pretty wild. There have been advances though. I'm told that this entire rear structure of the car can be autonomously assembled by robots in under five minutes and to better than aerospace industry tolerances. It's impressive stuff, but we're not actually here today to talk about the process. We're here to drive it. Okay, before we get going, a few things you need to know. This car is an early prototype and, how should I put this, wasn't exactly behaving itself all day. As a result, our driving time was limited to a few passes on the road and a handful of laps on the track, so please excuse the lack of action shots. We got what we could. Thanks. On with the film. Okay, so a little bit of housekeeping. The gearbox is a bit jerky. Now, this is a pre-production car. It's quite an early prototype. It's got a dog leg, straight cut gears, gearbox, which means it's really temperamental getting off the line. You need to use a hand clutch. You need to release that. You need to use the electronic assistance on the front axle just to get you moving. Yeah, you wouldn't be impressing any mates outside the club in this one because you'd probably stall it. But once you're up and running, you just change up with the power on and then Oh, the gearbox works, it works. Downshifts, boom, boom, boom. Quick as you like, back on the throttle. Oh! Yes, it is a mad, mad looking thing, this car. It's low and long from the side. The windscreen starts somewhere in front of the front axle. And then you come round the front and it's wide. It's properly wide. It's over two meters wide but you've got this super skinny cockpit in here. And that is all born out of the fact that Kevin Zinger, the man behind this company, he's obsessed with super bikes and he wanted this one plus one configuration. So you've got electric motors, two of them on the front axle in front of me, and then the driver, and then the passenger, and then the V8 engine behind me, which means you're a bit squashed up. The whole car is massively long and I'm tucked in the nose like some sort of turbo era F1 car. I tell you what, it requires focus and all your attention this car because once you're in it, there's no resting your hand on the wheel, sipping your coffee, checking your text messages. You're all in. You're staring straight down the barrel of the bonnet. You're surrounded by glass. You're in the middle of your lane. <laughs> it is a proper, proper thing. Now, I should describe 
exactly what I'm looking at. So in front of me I've got a digital screen with lots of parameters about my battery charge and various other things, oil temperature. The steering wheel, it's a yoke steering wheel so the tops cut off a bit like a new Tesla Model S plaid so you get a good look at those instruments in front of you but actually I'm glad it is because it forces you to keep your hands in the right position and forces you to concentrate. I've got some dials over here which are actually integrated in quite a nice carbon fibre panel but that's just for the prototype, that's going to be changed for the production car and that's about it. To be honest I'm not looking at anything else apart from the road in front of me because as I said it requires my attention this thing. Woo! Better than 10 shots of espresso. I'm on the road in a 1,200 plus horsepower supercar that's been 3D printed. And I feel alive. <laughs> the bare numbers here are bananas. The claimed dry weight of 1,240 kilograms, a combined 1,233 horsepower from a hybrid powertrain consisting of an in-house twin-turbo 2.9-litre V8 revving to 11,000 RPM and two e-motors, one for each of the front wheels. In this high drag configuration, it makes 650 kilograms of downforce at 100 miles an hour and two and a half tons of downforce at 200 miles an hour. While in low drag configurations, top speed is 281 miles an hour. 0 to 62 takes 1.9 seconds and 0 to 186 miles an hour takes 8.5 seconds. For reference, a Chiron Super Sport takes 12.1. Look, I knew this thing was going to be fast. It's broken the lap record at Laguna Seca, for Christ's sake, but oh my word, the way that the throttle picks up, the way that the engine revs out. Oh yes! That was just a cheeky 9000. It's got more to go. All right, so let's dissect this a bit by bit. And the first bit is the acceleration. You got hit a bit earlier. Here we go again. Oh man, it just keeps on coming. It accelerates for days, this thing. Here we go, down the hill. Oh, that was about 10,000 RPM. Whew. It's like driving an LMP car, this thing. You can feel the downforce actually through that compression. It's a full on, a full on ride. The steering is actually really good. I like it, there's plenty of feel. I talked earlier about the yoke steering wheel, meaning you've got to keep your hands in the right place. And right now, they're not going anywhere because I'm trying to hold on to this beast around Willow Springs, this old school track that's got little tricks and turns. And we're on the straight now, we're in fourth gear. That's eight, that's nine, that's ten. Oh man, that is beautiful. The thing is, these sorts of cars, they look so intimidating. You read about the performance figures and you just think, I can't handle that sort of thing. But when you got on track, this is its comfort zone. It's designed to be low and fast and produce massive amounts of downforce. This engine wants to just let go. It wants to scream to the red line. I'm just clinging on. I'll be honest, the gearbox, which was a bit grouchy and very hard to get off the line when we were on the road earlier. Now it's not a problem. Now it's up to speed. Now, as long as you got your foot to the floor, it loves an upshift. And we're down the hill again. And I'm in fourth gear. And the engine's revving. And I've got over a thousand horsepower. Oh! Woohoo! When I first met, Kevin Zinger about two years ago, he told me, look Jack, if you've got the tools to make something that is properly off the hook, just go for it. And fair play Kevin, this car is well and truly off the hook. Concerns? Well, making a powertrain as mighty as this properly robust isn't easy or cheap. And selling 80 cars for upwards of $2 million as an unknown company won't be straightforward either. But if it does make it to full production, to build this from a standing start with such a unique configuration and bespoke chassis tech is impressive stuff. Just imagine what it'll be like when it's finished.